Although Greece is still far from getting out of its debt crisis, EU officials and ministers admit that it's doing a big effort. This means adapting painful and unpopular reforms in return for bailout money. Could these new sacrifices and new loan help the weak Greek economy to recover and return to growth? To discuss this, but also the big challenges in Europe, I'm joined by the Greek finance minister, Euclid Sakalotos, who came in Brussels to speak to the Brussels Economic Forum. Minister, many thanks for joining us on Global Conversation. You're more than welcome. So, there has been one year since the dramatic moments that uh, the Greek government and you personally as a finance minister have passed uh, before you sign the bailout agreement and avoid a Brexit. So, one year later, are you confident that this program could finally work for Greece? Well, uh, I think it's been a very difficult year. We had a road map of how we were going to get out of the crisis, which uh, included uh, finishing the recapitalization of the banks to put them on a sounder footing. It included finishing the first review and getting something on, on debt. And I think on the 24th of May, we had uh, a decision which is leading to the finalization of the first review and the disbursement, but also a, a, a good deal o, o, on debt. Uh, you spoke about uh, the debt relief and this decision uh, made very recently. Are you satisfied with this? Because Greece voted very painful uh, reforms and laws and, of course, expected something for that. But finally, it's not something that big. I think it's an important deal in the following sense, that it actually, for the first time, defines the if necessary clause. Up to now, we have had decisions that said that the Eurogroup stands ready to do something if it's necessary. Now, that if necessary is defined. It gives a clear runway that after 2018, Greece's gross financing needs won't be for many years more than 15%. So all the measures will be taken to ensure that objective condition. So it's not a matter of the German or the Spanish or the French or the Greek finance minister waking up one morning and deciding do we need to do something, what needs to be done is now objectively given. And I think that's a very big step forward. So there was a survey by the Athens uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry saying that 69% uh, of Greeks will not be able to pay their taxes this year and 89% uh, believe that recent measures raising taxes will lead to a deeper recession. So why did you make this choice? Greek people now have to expect that as the program was very front-loaded, we finished with the fiscal measures and now we can turn to a more development agenda which will be helped by going into the ECB's quantitative easing, it will be helped by investors coming back. It, it, it needs a lot of effort, it's not over yet, but I think that although people are pessimistic, as you're uh, indica indicating from the polls show, we are at the bottom. I mean, if you ask me in September, when would be the worst situation for the present government? It would be that the closing of the first review, because it's a very front-loaded programme, yes? So it's not surprising that so peop people are so disappointed. They're right to be disappointed in some sense. I mean, this crisis has been going on for five, six, seven years. Yeah, yes, had... and you promised them a lot. So do you think that now people really believe in you, believe to what we you are We promised them? them a lot. We've made compromises, but we've also taken this settlement, this agreement, to the polls. The election in September was the first time the Greek people knew what they were voting for. It wasn't like we said we were going to oppose the agreement and then uh, changed our minds. This agreement, with its good sides and its bad sides, were actually part of the election campaign where we uh, won the election on that. And how do you feel, as a, a left-wing politician, to, to support and, in fact, implement this kind of policies that, uh, of course, include privatizations of public assets? As a left-wing minister, you have to uh, address the issues. I was faced in the summer with people telling me that we don't really need the left if it's only useful when we have 5% growth and 5% unemployment. If we're not useful to people when we have 25% unemployment and there's no growth, they're not going to vote for us after the recovery. People have voted for us because they know that we will enforce this program with as much social sensitivity as possible. And we've shown that in the way we've reformed the pension system. We've shown that in the way we've reformed the, the income tax system. Uh, we see now in 
in France that uh, they also the government uh, is trying to pass a very unpopular labor reform and we see people in the streets demonstrating. Are you with the people demonstrating outside or with the government, the French government that recently has become a very good friend of yours? Well, this is an issue that all uh, countries will have to face uh, labor market reforms. I'm not convinced that uh, uh, Europe is not doing well because of labor market uh, inflexibility. We've been hearing this for very many decades. There have been a lot of moves to labor flexibility and with little effect uh, or, or, or on employment. Uh, um, and generally, for instance, in Greece, the, the institution is going to ask us, for instance, to make firing more easily. But we know, and the, as you know, I'm an academic economist, the, the evidence is actually not there that if you make firing easier, you will get uh, lower unemployment. And you, what you do get is the same employment, and what you get is an increase in insecurity of workers. There is a possible Brexit, which is on the table right now. So, uh, the United Kingdom will go to a referendum to ask the citizens what you didn't ask Greek citizens in or out the European Union. What do you think? What could be better? for the UK and, of course, for Europe and for Greece. Well, I'm, I'm certain for the UK, for Europe and Greece, uh, remaining in Europe will be better. Uh, I have no um, uh, doubts on that. Um, if there is a Brexit, there will be other centrifugal forces and uh, centrifugal forces we had in the 1930s with competitive de devaluations, nationalisms, which had a very unsavory end, uh, uh, as you know. So I'm very worried about that. Um, but it's important for Europeans to take the lesson, whatever the result. Let's say, for instance, the Remain win by 2 or 3 percent. It's a very big warning signal. If Europe doesn't react, and uh, assure ordinary people that there is an agenda on wages, on pensions, on the welfare state, we will have more Brexit-type episodes in the future. Your predecessor, Mr Varoufakis, was saying, and repeatedly saying, that the uh, European Union and, of course, the institutions doesn't work in a democratic way. Do you agree with that? Your experience, what does your experience say? Oh, th yeah, I, I think that th there is an issue of uh, democracy in Europe is, is not in question. I mean, I don't think, uh, you know, the political scientists have been discussing this for the last uh, 10 years. It is absolutely critical that we do not label people who say, I want a bigger say in the issues that affect my life as populist. If you call them as populist, then you drive them to Le Pen, you drive them to the people who are supporting Brexit, you drive them to the ultra-right. You have to listen to people. People are saying, I want to say in matters that affect my life. And if Europe can't do that, I'm going to become anti-European. When do you think that uh, Greece will change so that uh, people will realize that it changes, uh, not only the figures, but the real economy, but the real life of the people? I think we will have failed if I come to you and you invite me in a year's time and the, 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 the first signs of a recovery are not there. So you can invite me if you want to in a year's time and we can, uh, or you can reset the, <laughs> the, uh, reset the question. But I hope this time next year people will see the, the development aspects of our programme coming in, growth returning, we're part of QE. I think it will be very different. So, Minister, thank you so much for being with us. You're more than welcome once again. Thank you.